Well, this is take two. I did a couple of flights already, but my screen recorder didn't record. And I've had that problem with the uh, IELTS um, screen recorder before, but anyway. So what we're doing, we have the um, ND32 filter on right now. And what I've done is I've set the white balance to sunny. We're in P-Log, filming at 4K, 24 frames per second. ISO is set to 100, and I have my shutter speed set to auto. Because what we're going to do, we're going to take it up to the altitude that we want, and then we're going to lock that. Uh, we're going to lock that down, okay? Uh, using this um, auto exposure lock feature. Okay, we've got 92% um, battery on the drone, 88% on the controller. We have GPS, um, we have enough GPS because we have green on both the controller and the drone. These are all things you should check before you launch, right? I've already calibrated the drone, I even calibrated the camera. Okay, let's go ahead and launch. Okay, it's setting its home point, and Parrot calls it Precision Home Set, <laughs> uh, which is similar to DJI's Precision Landing. The difference with the, with the Anafi is that when it comes back um, to home, it's just going to hover over where it launched from, and you have to either manually land it or push the land button. That's the only difference, but it's pretty precise. Okay, so I think I'm in. I think I'm in sports mode. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna put it in film mode, but I'm gonna kick up the speed a little bit. I'm gonna take it to 20. Take that to 120 or so, and I think that's good enough. Okay. It's going up to about a hundred feet. <laughs> and as Yogi Berra said, it's like deja vu all over again. <laughs> I've already done this, but <clears throat> we're out here flying. It's a beautiful day. So could be worse things, right? Okay, 95 is going up to about 100. Okay, so we, we are at 150th of, of a second. That's actually perfect. That's twice the frame rate that we're filming at. So it's twice to 24 frames per second. Almost twice, right? So we're going to go ahead and just lock that. Okay, so we're good to go. Now the beauty of that is as lighting conditions change, as we turn the drone, as we change the direction of the camera, the exposure will not change. It will stay the same. And um, that makes for a little, little nicer footage, I think. Okay, I'm going to actually climb. So we do have more speed here. It is a bit windy today. Now one thing to, to look out for that I'm going to be curious to see is whether I get those micro jitters that I mentioned before that I was getting before. Um, so I don't know if that was, you know, attributable to the wind or actually to the filters themselves. Okay, so we're just flying. Got the uh, Paradinafi in my line of sight there. We're at about 210 feet in the air. And we've got a nice little body of water there that we can check out. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, if I didn't mention before, oh, the one thing I do want to make sure I do is keep the cone or keep the controller facing the drone. And you know you can do that. You see the uh, mini map. Sorry about that. The mini map in the lower right hand corner, you can see if that cone turns red like that, you don't have the best reception. Okay? Alright. 
So this is a residential area, so um, there is a lot of interference here in terms of Wi-Fi. The uh, Anafi does have auto switching between 5.8 and 2.4 gigahertz, but Parrot, just in general, Parrot drones are known to struggle in residential areas. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on around. I did want to snap off a photo though, so let me uh, come on back here. And I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and switch this over, video off, and I'm just going to snap a photo just like that. And let's snap one more. Does appear to be a little distortion here. Let's see if I can change that. D rectangle. That's better. When you do wide, you're going to get a little distortion. Okay, let's turn towards our body of water. And snap off a photo. Okay, back to video. And let's make our way on back. some horses over here we're not real close to them but what can we do about that we can zoom in three times there's the horsies so we don't need to get very close to them and disturb them we can just zoom in how cool is that return to home is what I want so it's climbing to the altitude that I set, which I believe is 200 feet. Yep. And it's going to make its way back. And we'll just see how close it comes. And I'll bring that camera to face straight down so that we can see exactly where it is hovering above. 55% on the battery. Really, really, really nice flight time. It's coming on down. <laughs> Looking like a firefly. And looks like it's right above the launch pad. And I'm going to bring the Anafi straight down. We'll see exactly where it is. Yep. I'd say that's uh, precise. And bring that up. Okay, I would say that is pretty precise. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to remove the uh, filter, ND filter, and we're going to try out the lock auto exposure and lock auto exposure touch features um, without the filter on just to see if it uh, would be a good alternative uh, to using filters at all. I don't know. I might reconsider keeping the darn filters. We'll see. But let's go ahead and check out um, what the footage will look like when we don't use a filter and instead use the uh, auto um, exposure lock and the auto exposure touch. Um, features. Okay, so we're doing same settings, 4K 24 frames, P-Log, sunny white balance, ISO 100, and the shutter speed is on auto until we get to the altitude we want. Then we're going to lock it down. So let's get in the air. We have 50% on the battery, the drone battery. Um, we have green GPS on each uh, the drone and the controller. Precise 
or precision home landing or home set has been established so we're good to go I'm gonna go on up to about hundred hundred fifty feet or so so we can set our exposure where we want it now here's what I want to show you and again I did this once already but I think it got uh, squashed by my screen recorder okay here's the beauty of the lock auto exposure touch feature so if you want to expose for the ground you tap the ground right and it'll stay exposed in that manner if you want to expose for the sky you tap the sky now here's a trick if you want to expose if you want an even exposure what you want to do is tap right there like right right where the horizon is so where the sky and the ground both meet okay and the beauty of that is uh, the exposure won't change it'll stay exactly where you want it um, you can even do it for a object or location so let's see we have a tennis court over here let's expose for that so no matter where you turn or fly if you turn away from the tennis court turn back it's going to remain exposed uh, in the manner it was exposed when you locked it so that's great right okay so the thing about not using filters though is you can see that the shutter speed is up to one four thousandth and it's one thirty two hundredth now um, the foot it just won't be as smooth uh, but we'll see if we can even make that out so I'm gonna go ahead and lock it and let's go ahead and fly out and we'll get some more altitude here make sure you keep the controller pointed at the drone Just gonna bring that down so I can make sure I am doing that. There is the little anafi. And we're gonna fly back over to that little body of water there. And climb up to about 200 feet or so. And there is the anafi. Okay, I'm going to stop here, and I'm actually going to take a photo. So let's take a photo, and actually, why don't we take a panorama? I am going to do an auto exposure lock. And we're going to take that panorama. Okay, as luck would have it, I had some clouds blocking the sun with the ND32 shots, so the images aren't exactly apples to apples in terms of lighting. And while I prefer the image with the filter, the one without the filter looks darn good too. There's more detail in the shot with the filter though, and it's a warmer image. You have a much cooler image on the right, but again, it looks good. And all of that can be adjusted in post anyway. Now I can tell that the filtered video is smoother, but that's probably only because I'm looking for it. I don't know, most folks may not notice it at all. What do you think? Again, remember there were clouds blocking the sun on the left. And remember the whole point of using an ND filter to begin with is to slow down the shutter speed for smoother footage. But if you can't tell or notice it, 
what does it matter? <laughs> now here you can see how the polarizer minimizes glare from the water. All right, here's my conclusion. Do you need an ND filter to get good video? Absolutely not. Not for recreational type stuff like this. I really do like the images that Anafi produces just on auto, but since I have grown accustomed to my footage looking a certain way, I can tell when it doesn't. So I'll continue to use ND filters. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. Stay tuned for episode four. And let's continue having fun exploring what this little drone can do. In the meantime, be good to somebody and be good to yourself. Later. Side of you that says, I just have to follow that because you don't know who you're going to be. Who you're going to be. Who you're going to be.